So they've said yes to that. But what does it mean? What does it mean to repent of our sins, renounce evil, and with the help of God's Spirit to follow Jesus? Well, let's do repent of our sins first. Um, I think, well, I know I have, and I think it's true of all of us. We have a sort of tendency to put ourselves first. We have a tendency where we decide what's a good thing to do or a bad thing to do, a good thought to have or a bad thought to have. And we tend to try to do what's good for us even when it's not good for other people. And we all have a sort of tendency to think that we know what's best. Which, when you think about it, is a bit stupid. Because, I don't know about you, but I find it very easy to look back and think of occasions where I did what I thought was best. And it turned out to be wrong, both for me and for other people around me. And I know we've built up habits, choices and behaviours that hurt other people around us and hurt ourselves as well. And to repent, it's very simple, it's just to decide to change direction and not do that stuff. But it's more than that. Because it's to look in a new direction, to look to Jesus and to follow Jesus. Which brings me to a second question. What does it mean to follow Jesus? It's not like we can walk down the road after him. So what does that actually mean? Well, we know what Jesus did, the way he thought, the things he taught. Because the people who knew him wrote it down. You see, there was a bunch of people like 2,000 years ago, and when they met Jesus, he blew their minds. Because the way he lived, the way he spoke to people, the way he trusted the God that he called his father, the way he trusted the God that he called his father to know what was truly good and truly bad, just astonished them. And even when it was incredibly hard, Jesus showed that he trusted God enough to do what God was telling him rather than what he wanted to do. Even in, just before he was arrested and killed, his, his prayer was, please, I don't want to do this. Take this away from me. But your will, what you want, what's right first. And then on top of that, they were shown that he wasn't just some idealistic dreamer. Because when someone is executed in full public view, they are dead and they stay dead. And yet three days after his friends had watched Jesus be publicly killed, they saw him again. They talked with him again. They ate meals with him again. And when someone who has risen from the dead tells you about how you should live, well, it sort of seems only sensible to listen. And now we can follow Jesus by following that record of what Jesus said, what he did, And how his disciples then responded and see how we should respond. So it would be irresponsible to baptize people, to welcome them into God's family and leave them without a way to know more about Jesus and to learn about Jesus. And we've talked about Alpha, which is one way. But Lottie, I would like to present you with a Bible which should be a tool for your life. 
I want you to use that to let God speak to you through it. So you can grow and grow and grow in joy and happiness with him. And Jenny. Jenny? Jenny! Is Jenny around? Come, come with me. Set down your tea. Jenny, I want to give you this Bible you. as a symbol of God continuing to teach you and grow you and bring joy and life to you and those you love. Thank you. You can go back into your cup of tea now. <laughs> it, we have the Bible so we can, we can read the secret to life. We can read what Jesus said. And one of the things that Jesus said was this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. Love your God with everything. And love your neighbor as yourself. And I thought we'd work a bit on that. So if I said, love your neighbor. Neighbor. Well, what, what ways could we do? What things we could do? A passion. A passion. We're not married to our neighbour, but just <laughs> so within, let's let's use enthusiasm. Passion. Oh, compassion. Oh, I'm sorry, I misheard that completely. <laughs> so compassion. <laughs> Example things. Yep. Think to do to love your neighbor? Yeah. What would be nice? Um, Share a toy, maybe? Okay, that's good. Share stuff. Especially if you've got more than you need and they've got less than they need. Other things? The Cut their grass. Depending on ability and competence. Okay, so try and lift, uh, remove loneliness if they feel loneliness. Put the bins out. Put the bins out. Help ease their burdens. Help ease their burdens, whatever they might be. Uh, pardon? Cook them a meal. Possibly cook them a meal. Alan's had one. Say one. Help them if they need it. Help them if they need it. Say that again. Be an ear to listen to them. No, if you, sorry, cat, one last. Don't judge. Okay, thank you. Oh, is there another thing that we could do to show that we love? Make friends? Brilliant. Okay, no. Lots of things. They may not have a lawn. So you might not be able to mow the grass. They may be an excellent cook. So it might not be why. But there's all sorts of things that we can do to show we love people. But we have to think about it. We can't just mechanically do stuff. Yeah? So to understand where they're coming from, what they need, is really important in this. But these are lots of great examples. And when we look at this, we can see, well, if we lived like that, and our neighbors lived like that as well, how good would that be? Wouldn't that be lovely? 
And we can look at that and we can say, yeah, this makes sense. This makes sense. But the thing about obeying Jesus is we need to use our heads and think about it when we obey Jesus. And sometimes we can use our heads and think about it and we can see why Jesus is right in something like this. And then sometimes Jesus says stuff where we think, really? And we discover that our worldview, the way we look at God, the way we look at the world around us, the way we look at people, maybe isn't quite in tune with how Jesus does it. And then the challenge is for us to trust that Jesus is right. Because Jesus, in the bit of Bible we're thinking about today, simply said, love your enemy. Have compassion for your em- en- enemy. Share stuff with your enemy. Cut their grass for them. Remove burdens, loneliness from them. Do practical help for them. Maybe cook a meal for them. Listen to them. Help them. Don't judge them. He even said, when people are out to get you, out to persecute you, pray for them. And when I think about that, I think that my journey of following Jesus has still got a long way to go. That I learn to see the world and other people so that that seems sensible rather than an outrageous call on our lives. But the thing is, Jesus really believed it. So that when the people who had nailed him to a cross were watching him die, he simply said, Father, forgive them. And when we come to baptism, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is willing to forgive us and to call us into his resurrected life, his new wisdom in serving and learning from God. Such that when we're finished being baptized, it's not a done deal. We'll still drip with the love that that represents. And that people should be able to see us and say, yeah, they've gone through death and rebirth. So they love in a new way.